Without any further ado, I guess that is it, guys. We're going to go on and get into the Word tonight. I'm going to just be continue. It's going to be a continuation of uh, what I taught the last time I was up here, and we talked about walking in the Spirit. Brothers, thank you all so much. All right, appreciate it. Yeah, give a, give a round of applause for our brothers. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about walking in the Spirit. Now, the last time I was up here, we had kind of covered uh, the first two uh, points in uh, uh, we had three points, so today we're going to finish off that, that third point. Um, but when I was looking at the, uh, the Galatian church, these believers, man, they, they were doing their thing, but, but they, say like, it's like Bishop said, man, it wasn't all right, it wasn't all the way wrong, but it wasn't all the way right either. They were doing some things inside of the church, and they wasn't allowing the love of God to, to share, I mean, to be spread abroad within the body. So, man, they was fighting each other, doing, handling each other wrong, doing all kind of stuff. Some would sit on this side of the temple, the others would sit on the other side of the temple because they didn't want to be bothered, but they were showing up to the temple all of the time. And, and, and Paul was just warning them. He says, man, look, be careful. Remember, you, you, you're no longer under the law, but the law is summed up in, 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 in this. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And what? Love your neighbor as yourself. So that kind of checked them a little bit. And then he goes on to the second point. It was walk in the spirit. And when he said, that's all coming out of Galatians 5, 16. He says, walk in the spirit. And we went on to say that you cannot walk in the spirit if you have not been born again. When the Bible says that we are born again or we're born of the spirit, when we get saved, guess what? Our body don't get saved. Our body is still the same old body. Our soul don't get saved. It's still the same old soul. But what happens is when we put our trust in Jesus, our spirit man is rejuvenated. Rejuvenate, excuse me. Our spirit man is, is made alive. Our spirit man now connects to the Holy Spirit, and now we're able to move and control the other parts of our being. So, man, we talked about, you know, being connected with the Holy Spirit and following after the Holy Spirit, man, and just walking after him. And all this was was a warning to the Galatian church or to the believers. So what was the warning? Walk in the Spirit so that you would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So tonight, we're going to be looking at that third point, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right, everybody say flesh. flesh. All right, say it again, flesh. flesh. Say it loud and proud, the flesh. flesh. That's the very thing that ends, it messes all up in our whole walk with Christ. We are so connected to God, but that flesh. Now tonight, we're going to be looking at exactly um, what the flesh is and, and what part does the flesh play in the role in the life of a believer, right? So um, we're going to be coming out from Galatians chapter 5, verses 17, all right? Galatians 5, 17 says, For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. All right, now, this is the thing. Tonight, as I talk or I say some stuff, if you have any questions or you want to make any interjections, I'm open to it, all right? So don't feel bad if you maybe I, I say something, you don't understand it or something. If you got any questions or anything dealing with the scripture, man, let's go. This is a Bible study. So let's go on and study the Bible. It doesn't make any sense for us to come in here day in and day out and, and we sit under here and we do our little hour and then we leave and go home and we leave with nothing, amen? amen. All right, so... Being that you guys are students of Scripture because the other people that don't study their Bible, they, they only come on Sundays. But you guys are here on Tuesday, so that speaks a lot for you and your walk. All right? So let me ask you this here. As we're talking about the flesh, what does it mean? What, 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 what's the first thing come to mind when you hear the word flesh? Anybody? I'm sorry, say it again. Sex. Okay, the flesh. What else? Disobedience. I heard somebody over here. Walk off the boat. Okay. All right. <laughs> Selfishness. I'm sorry, y'all, man. I don't know if I got hair in my ears or something. I can't hear y'all. It's not like I'm losing it. Don't rock the boat or something. <laughs> but just whenever you rock it, don't tip it over. That's all I got to say. All right. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Flesh. All right, so the word flesh is actually mentioned in the scripture probably over 140 times in the scripture. So when he says, walk in the spirit so that you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, we need to know exactly what the flesh is. So I went to the Bible and I found out the, the, the biblical definition. Now, of course, I was looking for just this 
one sentence definition of flesh, but of course it brings everything into three parts. So the Greek word for uh, flesh is sarx. The word sarx, S-A-R-X, sarx, all right? And with that word, uh, what it really means is this. It talks, when it, when it kind of breaks down the definition, it's in kind of three parts. You got the flesh, the body, and then it also gives you another uh, denotation of what the flesh is. So let's look at the first one. When it talks about the flesh, it's talking about the, the soft substance of the living body, which covers the bones and permeates with blood. That's this. A little thing you can touch and feel, right? Now, some of our flesh is, has a little insulation under it. As you can see, my flesh is a little bit bigger than a lot of y'all's flesh. One brother said, well, Phil, that's not, you know, that's just your bones big. I said, boy, my bones is that big, I need to go to the hospital. Just, you know, they say, oh, you're big bones. But this is the thing. The flesh that we're talking about here, or what Paul warns is, it's not necessarily this skin covering that we have on top of our bones. Another thing of the flesh is the body, the body of a man. This is right here is our flesh. You remember in, um, I think it was in John chapter 1 when he says that, uh, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word became God, and the word became flesh. So Jesus put on this earth suit. So if Jesus would put on an earth suit, that lets me know that all flesh and everything in our flesh is not necessarily bad, right? Okay, so we're talking about the body, all right? Uh, use of natural or physical origin, generation or relationship, born of natural generation. All that mean is like you say, your offspring, that would be my flesh. Or when Adam's case, when he saw Eve, he says, man, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, right? There is a, is a connection there. Um, all right, so also, not only is the, uh, uh, the flesh part of the body, there's another part of the body that talks about, uh, which, which is related to the flesh, the sensuous nature of man, the animal nature. I say, oh my, the animal nature. That, rah, you know, that, that, rah, that, you know, some of us have, you know, the, some of us, we are more animalistic in nature. Uh -huh, big dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, what does that mean, the animal nature? Without any suggestions of depravity, which means that when you want something, you, 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 you are no longer in control. You just go after it. You want it. I'm going to get it. Nothing can stop me. I don't care what the consequences is. I'm going after that thing. Now, that right there could be a small problem. The animal nature with its cravings, with cravings which incite to sin. The physical nature of man as subject to suffering. So let's just talk about that animal nature a little bit. Mr. Sam, you, you can probably uh, vouch for me on this. There's a certain time when you, when, when, in, in, the, in deer where the females let off this, this scent, right? And this scent, this perfume to the bucks, it drives them crazy. Like where they could be eating and all that and they smell that and they, they just forget about food for days and weeks. They just, I got to get, I want to be where she is. That's, that's their thing. So sometimes, it, 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 you'll find, you'll pass on the road and you see a big old buck on the side of the road dead. What happened was he was so caught up in his animalistic nature that he didn't even see the danger of crossing I-40, I mean I-10 or whatever that is by Baton Rouge. He just know that that doe, the female deer, she ran across the road. So guess what? He wanted everything she had and he pursued her at all costs and get hit by a truck. So Hunter could be standing right there with a big old rifle and a gun, but guess what? His animal nature... He smelled that dough, and he trying to get, he'll walk right in front of the hunter with not even thinking about, is my life in danger? We have to make sure that we don't be operating out of that type of nature. So we're talking about what? We're talking about the flesh, all right? Also, the last part of the flesh denotes mere human nature, the earthly nature of man apart from divine influence, and therefore prone to sin and opposed to God. This right here, I think, is a lot what Paul is talking about. He says this here to the church. He says, man, look, walk in the spirit so that you won't fulfill the lust 
of the flesh. That flesh side that he's, he's talking about is our human nature. Now, as I said before, man, everything about humanity is not bad. The desires that we have is not always bad, right? Because Jesus would have never came in the, in the form of, of, of human flesh. He would have stayed in, in, a, uh, in a glorified body and did everything he had to do. So when we think about the desires of the, of the flesh, um, as humans, we, we desire food, right? We have to eat, we have to drink, you know? We desire to work and have things. But the only problem with our flesh is that now we live in a, a fallen world. Right? So the very things, the very desires that we were supposed to have that were supposed to have been okay, well, it's no longer okay. Why? Because it's been perverted by Satan. Yes, so instead of you going there and just eating your food, now you become gluttonous and don't you judge me. You, now you're eating too much. Right? Right? And some of y'all laughing. I'm, I'm going to pray for y'all. Lightning bolt number seven, touch them. Oh, then you begin, you know, communication with, with fellow brothers and sisters. Man, we need that. That's something that's a desire to communicate. But being that it's perverted, next thing you know, we're, we're lying, we're gossiping, we're, we're talking about each other like we shouldn't, and that's what was going on in the Galatian church, right? So we're talking about desires. We, we have desires for things. We, we want things. We work hard for things, right? But the problem is it's perverted by Satan. So now we're looking at what our brother got, we're looking at what our sister has, and then what do we do? Now we start to covet what they got. We're breaking the commandments. Right? When it comes to sex, God created sex for husband and wife. He said the two shall become one flesh, but now that we live in this perverted world, what are we doing? We want to have sex with everything that passed. Just like the animal instinct of the buck with the doe, we, we are looking to be with anything. Doesn't matter who she is or who he is, or, you know, it doesn't really matter. When we're being controlled by that in this fallen world that Satan has perverted, guess what? Our flesh will lead us the wrong way. Because you'll wake up and realize that no longer you're healthy and strong, but that flesh is only covering bones because you're sitting in the hospital dying of a venereal disease. Something you got, you didn't got that gangster, and you came and shake it if you wanted. So we're talking about the flesh today. One brother said this here. He says, the flesh is any human action or achievement without dependence upon the Holy Spirit and without glorying and exalting and trusting, treasuring, and valuing Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. We're trying to figure out how do we, if we're walking in the Spirit, we don't want to fulfill the lust of our flesh. We don't want to be led by our flesh. So what is the flesh? The flesh is any human action or achievement without dependence upon the Holy Spirit. Well, you might say, well, Phil, how in the world could that even be possible? If I'm a believer, I come to church and all that stuff, how am I going to be without Jesus Christ? The thing is, man, just as it was in the Galatian church, they wasn't all the way right, but they wasn't all the way wrong. They were giving in to their fleshly desires. They were getting into the, their own selves. The next thing you know, they were showing up out of more out of a religious act and not really uh, uh, honoring God. Our lives are supposed to bring honor to God all the time. Our lives are supposed to be one that people could see the light in us and give glory and honor to, the, to our Heavenly Father, right? So if we're not doing that, then guess what? We're not walking in the Spirit. We're walking after the flesh. Now, I want us to think about something. I looked at, uh, hey, give me 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Because this, this, this thing with the spirit and the flesh is simple, but yet it's a little bit complex. I want us to look at this verse of Scripture, and I want you to pay close attention to it. The Bible says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That means the whole person is to be sanctified. And I pray, God, your whole spirit your soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you catch that? The spirit, the soul, and our body. We're a three-part being, right? So we have, uh, let's see, TP, Big John, come, can y'all give me a hand for just a second? Uh, just, just for a few seconds, I'm not going to, you know, right? So TP is coming, so that he's going to be the, the spirit. This is the spirit right here. How you doing, Spirit? Praise, Spirit. Nice to see you. Uh, at least Spirit got a nice grip. How you doing, Flesh? Flesh. <laughs> My man. <laughs> All right. So this is the thing. We're talking about either going to be led by the Spirit 
or we're going to be led by our flesh. Now, this is the thing. We, we, last time I was up here, we talked about being led by the Spirit, and everybody was in agreement that we're going to be led by our Spirit. So, Spirit, whatever you do, me and the flesh is automatically going to do. So, you got the Spirit, right? You have the soul. Now, the soul is made up of your, of your feelings, your emotion, your thoughts, and then the flesh, which is the body, well, he's going to do whatever you want to do. Now, this is the connection. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, only connects with the Spirit, with your spirit. The devil has a great connection to the flesh. Now, the soul, which is the heart of your, your emotions and thoughts and all, he, he don't care which direction he go. All right? Whichever one's appeal to him, that's the one he going to go. So if the spirit is in control, spirit, whatever you do, we going to do. All right? The spirit is in control. That we are following the spirit. Now, spirit, you just do your thing. Whatever you do, we're going to do. All right? So, look, we're following the spirit. We're following the spirit. Now, if you notice that the flesh was a little slow to move, why? Because the, spirit, the flesh don't want to do what the spirit do. Right? But he's going to do it. Why? Because the spirit, man, is so much stronger than the flesh. And what happens is this here. The spirit tells the soul and the mind, man, you better, do, you better praise God because you've been so good. And the, and the, and the soul will be like, boy, you sure all this right. You've been good. And you tell the flesh, hey, you better do what I tell you to do. And the, the flesh will be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. All right? But what happens after a little while, <laughs> the spirit, man, you know, you just got saved. You're on fire farm and all that. But then things happen. Days go by. And the flesh begin to whisper in your ear. It feels good. Yeah. Y'all see, you see, have y'all not saved because y'all remember what that song is. Huh? <laughs> they start off praising God like this right here. Next thing you know, they're they doing all this right here. They, they didn't forgot. But guess what? They're being led by what? The Spirit. So, the Spirit, when He's in control, guess what happens? He becomes stronger. The spirit begins to get weak. What happens to the soul? The soul don't care. Whichever one appeals to him, that's who he's going to go with. So guess what? It's been three weeks since I talked with the Lord. It's been four weeks since I read my Bible. I, yeah, I came on Sunday. I came on Tuesday, but half the time, guess what I was doing? I was on my phone. I was looking at Snapchat. I was looking at uh, Instagram. I was all on TikTok. I wasn't paying attention to nothing they said. So now I showed up, but the spirit is weak. And now whatever the flesh tell me to do, I'm going to do Flesh, what it is. Flesh, you tell me. Whatever you do, that's what we're going to do. Spirit, you better get ready. You ain't got no choice. Uh-huh. Let's go. Run. Oh, Lord. I hope you don't run too long, because look. <laughs> hey, thank God. It's just a thing. Okay, I'm going to do something. Okay, I'm out of bread already. When you said that, I was thinking that. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're going to do some push-ups. Let's go. Whatever what you want to do. God, dog, let's go. Here we go. All right. Well, don't do too many now, Joan. I'm telling you right now, don't. Don't, don't do You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm glad we just done three. I was, I, was, I was about to tap out. I was about to. Okay, so this is the thing. When you talk about walking in the spirit and not fulfilling the lust of the flesh, when the flesh begins to talk and to do stuff, it only appeals to, the, to, to, it appeals to our feelings, right? And guess what? We go with it. And when we go with it, the spirit is still there, but he's so weak and he seems so far away. He just began to whisper, no, don't do it. But the flesh is like, man, you want that. You see it, it look good, it tastes good, go after it. And I'm out of breath right now, I'm still trying to <laughs> catch my breath. All right, so thank you all so much. So that is when we hear the spirit <laughs> and the flesh. That's what we're talking about. Okay. So when we talked about, you know, following the Spirit, it was all kind of benefits that was there when we follow after the Spirit, when we go after the Spirit and being led by the Spirit. But tonight I want to talk to you simply about a few of the consequences for following the flesh. Right? The Bible says that living in the flesh produces a number of unfortunate uh, consequences. First, we see that those who live according to the flesh and never repent from their sin will experience separation from God both in this life and the next. The thing about falling after your flesh is a very slippery slope. And it's crazy. In the life of the believer, you don't actually know that you're following after the flesh until you wake up one day and you realize, man, I'm not close to God like I was. What happened? 
Because, man, when you first get saved, man, you're all excited to be with God. You, Man, I want to pray with him. I want to talk to him. I want to talk to this brother and this sister. You know, you, you, you drop your keys, and they say, somebody lost their keys. I got the keys to the kingdom. You know, we, we, we super, you know, just excited to be part of the kingdom of God. But we begin to slip away easily and slowly, and there's consequences for following the flesh. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, verses 21. Romans chapter 6, verses 21. Now remember, this following the flesh, that's, what, that's, what, that's the part of the, the equation that Satan himself is attached to. He always appeals to our flesh. It says, What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Now, we look at that verse, and we're like, man, what is he talking about? You remember, I think it was Paul that said, man, you will know a tree by what? By its fruit. Every time you do something, you're going to produce some type of fruit. Is it going to be something good, or is it going to be something bad? But in this situation, when we are constantly following after our flesh, it says that we're going to be producing some fruit that's not going to, that's going to make us ashamed, that we're going to be ashamed, that we're going to be embarrassed by the very thing that we produce, and that's not a good place to be. And not only are we going to be embarrassed and we're going to be sad and say, man, I can't believe I let myself get like that. I can't believe I've done that thing. Have you, have you ever been in that kind of situation? Have you ever done something and you'd be like, man, Lord, what am I doing? And you find yourself, man, like, man, I got I to gotta get this thing right. I re remember when, you know, this was... I was in my college days, and I was kind of wilding out, at least, you know, I thought I was keeping my wildness out in, under control because I wouldn't cuss, I wouldn't drink, I wouldn't smoke, I wouldn't do none of that stuff. But it was just to a point where I was looking at my life, and I was like, man, what are you doing, bro? And it's, it's sad that sometimes God got to put us flat on our back for us to come to ourselves and say, man, what are you doing? I, I had to wait till I was flat broke. I remember, I think I told you all about the party I, I threw and I had to go borrow some money from my mom. And she was like, Lord, Phil, what are you, are you selling drugs? What are you doing? Are you doing drugs in Lafayette? What are you doing? But the thing is this here, we, 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 we don't want to get, to, we don't want to have God to put us on our back. Because why? Because we don't want to go and walk and fulfill the lust of the flesh. He says, what is the fruit that ye have in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For in the end, those things is death. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verses 13. Remember, when you appeal to the flesh, you're separating yourself from the one true and living God. You're separating yourself and you're, 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 you're pretty much doing like a self-inflicted wound. Like, like, like you're really bringing yourself some harm. Romans chapter 8, verses 13. For if ye live after the flesh, right? If, if your whole MO, if you're constantly allowing your flesh, that, 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 that nature, that, that fallen nature, to lead and guide you in everyday life, for if you live after the flesh, what's going to happen? You shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, what's going to happen? You shall live. Right there, you got the soul right in the middle. Whatever the flesh want to do, if, if the flesh is stronger, he's going to do it. If the spirit is stronger, guess what? He's going to do it. But even when you're pursuing the flesh, the scripture is saying all hope is not lost. He says, for if you live after the flesh, guess what? Yes, you're going to die. For the wages of sin is what? Is death. Your payment for your sin. Don't ever think that you can just live and wild out and all that stuff. You got to pay for that, right? And at the end of, the, at the end of your period, you're going to get a check. And that check is going to say death. It's going to say eternal separation from God. But all hope is not lost. Why? Because it says, but if you through the Spirit, so the Spirit is still there. If you can just listen for that still, small voice, don't go there. Don't look at that. Don't touch that. Man, stay away from that. If you just listen to that voice, you have an opportunity to do what? To mortify the deeds of the body. What does that mean? You're killing the flesh. You're killing the flesh. If you're constantly reading your word and every day praying and all that stuff, you're making that spirit man stronger. If you're constantly watching TV and all that stuff, listening to secular music, watching all kind of uh, wrong movies and, and just filling yourself up with all stuff that's fleshly, guess what's going to happen? The flesh is going to be strong. All right? 
The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is still speaking. Galatians 7, Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 8. He says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. You know, self-deception is the worst deception there is. When you fool your own self into believing something and you know it's wrong, but you really believe, man, that's the worst deception there is. That's it. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. You will not make a fool out of the, uh, of the, the ways of God, out of the structure of God. I don't care what you do, how smart you think you are. Guess what? You're not going to make a fool out of God. God will not be mocked. Right? He says this here. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also what? Reap. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I play a farm on YouTube, right? I mean, well, no, I'm not really play a farm, but I plant a garden. Anybody else plant gardens in here? Anybody got a garden? All right, two people, all right? So everybody else is dependent on the system to constantly feed us poison, and we're wondering why we got to stay sick and all. Okay, I, just, okay, I know you may be a little ashamed because, you know, you had to work outside with you. How many of y'all know, how many of y'all know how to plant a garden? Anybody? All right, well, listen to the thing. We'll be selling tomatoes $8 a piece. Because you got to buy them from somewhere, so you might as well buy <laughs> Okay. Well, let me tell you all the concept of planting and so on. I know we, this is the thing. A lot of stuff comes in ag ag agricultural type terms because that's what they were doing at that time. Everybody had a garden. Kind of like when you was growing up and your mama was still alive and all that stuff, or great grandma. Everybody had a little garden. In the house. They had their little peppers and tomatoes and all that stuff. Then they had their little rabbits and all that, chickens running around. Well, this is the thing. The Bible says this here, believe this here. Just as you know, when you put something in the ground, a seed in the ground, you expect whatever seed you put in to come out is the same way with God. God is not going to be fooled where you're going to plant something and then you're going to reap something else. The thing is this here, when I put a tomato seed in the ground, I'm expecting a tomato plant. When I put a cucumber in the ground, I'm expecting a cucumber. And if that cucumber, if that thing don't grow, then it's going to be a problem. This season right here, I, I had some, some green bean seeds. Well, green beans because the bean is the seed. Well, I planted the stuff in my box. Now, my wife is going to tell me, Phil, you didn't plant nothing right there. I said, girl, I planted the seeds in that box. Now, only one side grew. Everyone on this side, it grew, but that side right there, nothing grew. So I'm like, man, what in the world is going on? I put a seed in the ground. I'm expecting it to grow. So I come back. I put the same seeds again, waited another, I don't know, three or four weeks, nothing. Well, the seeds was bad. I planted some bad seeds. So the thing was, I did not get a harvest. Why? Because I planted the bad seed. What seeds are you planting? Some of us might be going through some troubles and trials in our lives. Why? Because we planted some stuff three, four weeks ago. We planted some stuff last year, and the Bible says what? God is not going to be marked. You've been planting all kind of, uh, of negativity. You've been planting uh, 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 just... Just, just bad stuff, talking about people, gossiping. You've been putting that thing out there. Now, the thing, when those people start doing the same thing to you, understand, the Bible says what? God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap what? Shall of the flesh reap corruption. Guys, I want us to think about this. We can't turn off our belief in Christ. We, 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 it's not like an on and off switch that we can say, you know what, I, I don't feel like following Christ today. I'm going to do whatever I want to do today. The Bible says our lives are hidden in Christ. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it's Christ that lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the, of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Our lives is not our own, right? So now we're in Christ today, we're praising God, we're doing all this stuff. But then the flesh is starting to call, and man, this weekend, I, I want to go out. I want to go out, and I don't want to go do nothing bad. I just want to fellowship. <laughs> I want to drink them little drinks with the umbrella on the top. The little salt around the edge. Some of y'all laughing a little too hard. You know, he says, for if we sow, for he that soweth to his flesh, of the flesh shall reap corruption. But there's always hope in the scripture. But he that soweth to the spirit, 
shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. This is the thing, man. We're always catering at our flesh. Guess what we're doing? We're pushing God farther and farther away, and now he's constantly coming at us. But you remember in, in uh, Genesis, he says, man, my spirit not going to always strive with man, right? He says, I'm not always going to be at you trying to get you to come and be in relationship with me, right? At one point, you're going to leave us to ourselves, and that's a dangerous place to be. Did you know that you can become a slave to your fleshly nature? Yes, you can. Romans 6.16. Let's go to it. Romans 6.16 says this. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. So what does that mean? You have your soul, right? Number, spirit, and flesh. Whichever one you say and, 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 and willingly because that's what you will and your emotions and all that. You willingly say, I'm going to be enslaved to Satan himself and sin. Right? Because when we do things that's outside of the will of God, guess what we're doing? We're agreeing with Satan. There's, there's no gray areas. It's, it's black or white. Either you're going to be in or you're going to be out. And the thing is this here, we don't live life like that, especially in this kind of society, because all we hear, man, if it feels good, do it. Man, just do it. Man, do you. I remember them, 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 them youngsters had a saying, YOLO, you only live once. Huh. Man, this is the thing. We have to be careful. We have to be mindful all the time, man. What, what is my life saying? Am I being pleasing to God with my life? Am I, am I being enslaved to, to this very thing that I know brought not only my family down, but if you look throughout the, the generations, man, that same thing that I'm playing with, it's the same thing that destroyed my family. I think about my, my, my family on my mom's side. Man, I love them dearly. They are very, some of the nicest people you ever want to meet. But they like that drink. They like that drink. I remember before I was fully committed to the, to the work of the law, right? <laughs> Me and my lovely wife, got girlfriend at the time, you know, we went out of town and we would go to my family's house. I don't drink. Hey, even before I was doing the work of the Lord, I don't, I don't drink. Well, my family got this thing, and they always ask you, man, you want some tea? Now, I'm telling you right now, there's not no Lipton tea. That's, <laughs> and there ain't no short island. That's them long island, that, you know. So <laughs> I go over there, I tell them, yeah, I mean, I, I'm good. I, I see, man, my, my girl, my, she might want some. Were we married at the time? No, we weren't married at the time. Yeah, it didn't matter. We were sinning anyway, so it don't. I said, man, my, my girl, she would want some. So, man, she, she took a little taste. She said, Phil, that is not no lemonade. I mean, that's not no tea. I said, what you mean? I said, go on, drink up, sweetheart. You, you like this, you know. So we go to the next uncle house, and he raised up his garage. He got a whole steel in there. And then you want some tea? I said, I don't want none, man. My girl, she might, she might want some. And I said, Misha, don't be rude. Now, this is your first time meeting my people. <laughs> so next day, you know, Misha walking around, praise, I don't know. The tea, I don't want, no, you know. This, <laughs> this is the thing. We can laugh about it now. But we got to understand. That very thing that they are so proud about is the very thing that killed my grandfather. It's the very thing that took the life of my, my great uncles. Is the very thing that took the life now of my uncle. They all died of sclerosis of the liver. But they got a, even got a motto, man, if we thirsty, we drink, some crazy thing. And, and you can't get it to them. But the problem is they have become slaves to their flesh. Right? And the same thing with us, we have to be careful, man. Some of you today is, a, is just a warning. You've been flirting around too close to the edge for something that has destroyed your very family. And right now, yes, you are a believer, but you're still playing with that. And you're leaning over, and the Holy Spirit is saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Stop. Back up. Please heed the warning of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. All right. It says again, know ye not, no, no, we, we, yeah. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether 
of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. The soul, your, your sinner man has an opportunity either to go with the flesh or go with the spirit. This slavery always leads to a destructive lifestyle and a deteriorating living. And that's what I was talking about with my, with my, with my family. In Hosea chapter 8, verse 7, it's a very short verse, but that thing is so powerful. It's for the, it says, for they have sown the wind, right? They have sown the wind, a very small Marcel, a very small seed, a very, they just want to try it out. They, they just want to taste it. They just want to experience it just that one time. It says, they have sown the wind and they have shall reap what? A whirlwind, a tornado, or something catastrophic. Man, I think of our children, right? A lot of our children, man, we, we raised them in church. We bring them to church, they drug babies. We drug them to church every time we, we, the doors was open, right? We drug them there. But the thing is, we raised them in church, but we didn't really raise them in Christ. And I, you know, it, it sometimes it hurts because you see your, your young one or you see your child so into the wind and just don't know what, what you're setting yourself up as a serious downfall. Man, you're going to reap the whirlwind. Right? You might have that son or that daughter, man, they, they might have, you know, just, just want to, that one time, want to see what it felt like. See what the experience would be. You tried to warn them, but they never got Christ in their heart. Some of you are the very same way. You have been living a life, and you just, you just want to try it out. You just want to taste and see. You want to, not taste and see, that's a scripture, but you want to taste the, the, the flesh. You want to go after that thing and see what happened. But Hosea, the prophet Hosea says, it. he says, man, they've sown to the wind, they shall weep a whirlwind. Man, another day, man, we were talking about this, this basketball player. Um, I think his name was Lynn Bias. This is like in the 80s. Like some of y'all probably weren't even born yet, except that side. I could tell y'all were born. George Washington was here. No, I'm just Okay, so, but anyway, this basketball player, right? This guy, uh, college athlete, man, he was so good in basketball, went to the, I think, NBA draft. They drafted him the second round pick. Man, he was doing everything so fire. He, was, he had already was in negotiation with Reebok for a $1.6 million deal. Now, this was like in the mid-'80s. This brother was, look, on it. He goes back, man, after they didn't signed everything, man. Him and his roommates, they go back, and he wanted to sow to the wind. So they began to... Snort cocaine. Lynn Bias, his celebration, he never got to go shoot basketball again. He died right there in that, in that college room. This boy had the whole world ahead of him. He was already set for life, but he sold to the wind, and he reaped the whirlwind. I think about all these mega pastors that we've been hearing about in the news lately. You know, we, we think, I, I remember a few years back, man, they had one brother that, uh, man, preached the gospel and all that out of California. A pastor, man, a preacher committing suicide. He sold to the wind. Y'all remember Jimmy Swagger from back in the day? Man, Jimmy had the largest church ever. But they find him where? In, a, in the hotel room with a prostitute. He sold to the wind. One little moment of pleasure bring you a lifetime of pain. God is trying to say, listen, man, you are mine. Don't sow to the wind. You don't, want to, you don't want that stuff on your back. Other pastors, man, I remember, I think it was some uh, brother in Florida, mega church, everything doing really well. Again, fell from grace. I don't want you ever to think that, man, because you've been saved three, four weeks, a month, a year, 20 years, that somehow you were excluded from that fleshly pool. If you're not constantly being in Christ, if you're not constantly renewing your mind, guess what? You're going to be right there. You're going to be, you're going to have a time where you're going to sow to the wind and that whirlwind is going to take you up. I think about in Genesis with Adam and Eve. Just think about it, man. I don't know how long it was before the fall, but they were surrounded by the glory and the goodness of God, right? All the time they were there and sometimes we, we, we can get caught up taking, we, we, we take God's uh, grace and mercies for, for granted, right? And I think that's what was going on with Adam and Eve. They were, they were so caught up in, in the goodness of God. Life was good. Work was easy. Man, all them boys had to do was go get animals line up. You look like a 
cow. Yeah, that, that's the name of it, cow. Easy life. But what happened? You got too comfortable when it came to the things of God. God said, man, don't do this. This one thing I told you, don't do. God set boundaries in the relationship, but Eve couldn't handle the boundaries. Why? Because she listened to the serpent. How many of us know and we hear the word of God constantly every single Sunday, every single Tuesday? Maybe we do a little something women's Bible study or men's group. We hear that all the time. We're really not paying attention. We're listening to another voice. And we're getting ready to reap the whirlwind because we decide to sow to the wind. So Eve is out there, man, and, and the serpent begins to talk to her. And, and you know, he, did, he appealed strictly to her flesh. I mean, he shined that fruit up to make it look so good. Now, guess what? She didn't seen that old fruit time and time again. They've been in the garden for I don't know how long. That thing never appealed to her. But on that particular day, that thing had a certain kind of shine and a glare to it. The Bible said that it looked good for food, the lust of the eyes. We have to be very careful, man, what we put in front of our eyes. All right? Lust of the eyes. She tasted that. The, the servant said, man, take it. And she tasted it. The lust of the flesh. She tasted that thing. And the pride of life, Satan told her, guess what? You're going to be just like God. You're going to know good and evil. Well, sure, you ain't knew it all this other time. Why right now that becomes such way and idea? Why is it that now you want to know good from evil? You have had it all good. You don't even know what evil is. You have never experienced evil before. And some of us, man, we get saved, we get caught up in God, and God is blessing, he's doing his thing all around us. But then we begin to listen small voice of our flesh and we go after that thing and then we find ourselves kicked out of the garden we find ourselves now outside of the will of God don't know how to act don't know how to do stuff why because we've never been away from God it's been so long that now we're out here doing this and doing that and nothing is being we're not finding any type of fulfillment scriptures say man they they sow it to the wind and they reap the whirlwind. That's what happens when we appeal to our flesh or we side with the flesh. Amen? Let's go to point, number, point B, the war. The Bible says, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things which you would. When we look at that word lusted, a lot of times we only think of, you know, strong desire, right? But in this element, it's, it's a constant conflict. It's a war that's going on. So this is the thing. When, 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 when TP was up here and John was up here, yeah, we were, you know, the, the, the soul was kind of following along and doing whichever. But in reality, it's really a war. It's a bloody war because each one of them want an extreme thing for you. One on one end wants extreme death for you, and the other one wants the extreme blessings of the Most High God for you, and you're caught up in the middle, and you have to make a decision which one I'm going to go with. It's a constant battle. The war between the flesh and the spirit is a continuous battle within every believer. When I talked about those mega pastors and stuff, man, we might say, oh, man, them boys just fell, them boys, but them boys probably wasn't saved and all that. Man, I don't put my mouth on nobody. Man, you don't know the kind of relationship them guys had. You, you don't know. You see, you see a 15-second uh, YouTube video or see a 10-minute clip, and you want to make a judgment. What is your life saying? Are you always walking up right before God? Is God pleased with you? When God looks down at, at, at us and, and he crosses his arms and he says, does he look down and say, man, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of her. That's where, that's the, that's the focus that we should have. That's the thing that we should be pursuing. We should be pursuing righteousness at all costs. There's a war that's going on and we treat our life not really as a war, but it's just we treat it like, a, uh, it's just no big deal. We don't really understand the consequences of our actions, I think, sometimes. And I can be guilty of that, you know what I'm saying? It's not like we, we, you know, we just deliberately say, you know what, I'm going to kill somebody today. Nah. It's those little small things that pull us away from God, and we have to be careful. Like in the part of the Scripture, it says, man, a little, little leaven leavens the whole lump. All right? The Holy Spirit who dwells within us desires to lead us unto righteousness, holiness, and a life that reflects the character of Christ. 
It's all about our reflection. Right? When somebody looks at us, let me ask you this here. Now, you can only speak for yourself. I, I can't speak to you. But how many, how many of you have jobs? A few of y'all got jobs, okay. Right? How many of you have your own business? Entrepreneurs, okay. See a few of y'all. How many of you sell dope? I'm just trying, just trying, I'm just trying to see where y'all at, you know. Tell me, I ain't read my hand for nothing. I'm really none of your business. No problem, no problem. But this is the thing. Let's say you're on the job, right? And I just got to say little jokes like that because some of y'all, I want y'all falling asleep because I want to come pinch y'all, but I, I don't feel y'all might wake up frantically and hit me, you know, and I don't want that. So let's say on your job. Well, how, does, how, do, how do people know you? Like, when they, when they, when they, if they, I would just walk on the job, man, and, you know, I go up there and I say, man, hey, you know such and such? And, like, because you was off that day, you played sick and you really stayed out too late the Monday and you wouldn't come to work, I mean, Sunday, so you didn't come to work Monday. But I went to your job looking for you. And I say, man, you know such and such? And they're going to be like, yeah, I know uh, such and such. Now, this is the thing. What kind of response are they going to give? Or they gonna be the one that says, oh man, look, she's a real nice lady, man. She, 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 look, she prays with everybody. She always talking about the goodness of God. All right, that's that one. Then they got that other one. Hey, you know such and such? What that one, that, cra that old crazy girl? <laughs> that girl tried to cut my ties the other day. She keyed up my car and all that, but she wanna talk about she a Christian. What are other people saying about you? Is your life exemplifying that you are being led by the Holy Spirit? Or is it constantly showing that, hey, man, I'm, 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 I'm walking after the flesh? And look, just be honest, because nobody can answer those questions but you, right? But just remember, man, our lives every single day, every day, not just on certain days, like some of us, we pick, well, man, I'm going to be a Christian Monday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Ooh, Lord, I might, be, I might do Jesus Tuesdays and Thursdays, because look, I got stuff to do on, on the weekend. That's not for us. And I know we, we kind of jokingly and being facetious about it, but if you really look at your life, man, what are people saying? When, when somebody is going through some trouble, do they come to you? Or when somebody is sick, do they come and say, man, sister, could you please lay hands on me? Or, or if they're going through and they're about to fall over the edge, or, or they come, could you please pray with me? And if they're not doing that, then what is that saying about you? It's saying that we're a bunch of religious people that's doing simply what? Walking after our flesh. We try to pretend in front of God and God's people but it's really happening. The Holy Spirit who dwells within us desires to lead us into righteousness, holiness, and a life that reflects the character of Christ. However, the flesh, remember this is a battle. The flesh pulls us in the opposite direction towards sin, selfishness, and disobedience to God. Now this week just started. What was Monday like? Just think about it. What was Monday like for you? And just don't, just you keep looking straight, you don't, you know, don't make no faces. Just, you know, just, what was Monday like? Was Monday was that, that time when you felt the Holy Spirit really in your life and you was pulling you to holiness and godliness and you were steadily moving in that direction? Or was Monday one of them days where, where you know, you, you didn't really get up and, 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 and see God like you should and then your, your whole day went to crap? Hmm? What was Monday like? Because today is just Tuesday, and this is the thing. If Monday was bad and Tuesday was bad, you have an opportunity to make sure that Wednesday go a whole lot better. Amen? Amen. Right. This conflict can be intense. It often feels like we're being pulled in two directions. The Apostle Paul describes this vividly in Romans chapter 7. And I know we're all familiar with it, so let's take a look at it. Romans chapter 7, but we're going to drop down to verse 18. Now, remember who Paul is. Paul is the, the apostle of God, sent to reach all the Gentiles. He knows the law. He knows everything about being connected with God. He experienced the, the falling of the horse on the road to Tarsus. Like, he, uh, that's, that was Tarsus as we fell out? Not Tarsus. Where you were? Where, where you were? Damascus, him there, there, Damascus, not Tarsus. That was, that was Job. Not Job, what's that boy's name? Jonah. That's how, I got to make sure y'all listening now. So this is the thing. He experienced that. He heard the voice of God and he felt the call of God. But listen to the man, how he describes this war that goes on between his spirit and his flesh. Verse 18 says, For I know that in me, this is my flesh, 
dwelleth no good thing. I want you all to repeat that with me on the count of three. One, two, three. For I know that in, my, in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. All right, I want you to say that again, and I'm not going to be in your way. Could you please say verse 18 again? One, two, three. Well, it's no good thing. Well, it's no good thing. So in our essence to be the best that we can be, it's still filthy rags to God. Right? In our flesh, dwell it no good thing. And Paul really understood that. And he said this here, for to will is present with me. Man, look, I, I really, I really want to do it. Now, I want to do the right thing. I really, I'm telling you with all my heart, I want to do the right thing. He says, for to will is present in me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Sometimes Paul said, man, they get a little rough out you. It get rough sometimes. Man, they get rough sometimes. He says, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. How is it possible? Whichever one is the strongest. It's either going to be the spirit or is it going to be the flesh. Now you can go and live by your flesh and abide by your flesh. And guess what? You're going to get set up for destruction. All right? Because the thing is this here, man, we, we, we go about our lives and we just thinking that, okay, I want to do right. I don't do right. It don't really matter, man. It's going to be all good. No, it's not going to be all good. It says, Paul is saying this here, I want to do right, but it's, I just find the will to do right is the bad thing, is the hard thing. And that hard thing is this, when we ever we submit ourselves to the Spirit and being led by the Spirit, guess what? The Spirit is, not, we're not just out here alone. The Spirit is there to help us out to make sure that we make the right decisions. Now, let's keep on going. It says this here, now, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil that which I would, not that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it's not more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. That's why it's so important that we be born again. Because, yes, we're a new creation, but we still have some of the more tendencies. And the more times that we don't go out there and do what we need to do, guess what? That old tendency is going to rise up again. The inner battle is evident that the spirit is actively working in us. So this is the thing. Man, when you're being tempted and all that stuff, don't get so down and out. Don't get so depressed and mad about it. This is the thing. That means the Holy Spirit is working. That means when you are faced with those situations, that, that, that whisper is not, don't do it. That whisper is, hey, don't you do that. Don't you do that. And you'd be like, yes, I surely won't do it. Why? Because I'm following after the spirit. All right? The more we yield ourselves to the Spirit, the louder the Spirit of God gets. The more it's easy for us to resist temptation. And when God, uh, how he says that, man, he says, uh, uh, when, whenever we're tempted, he's going to do what? He's going to provide a way of escape. The thing is, when we're sowing after the flesh, that door of escape is there. The door is wide open. But guess what we do? Uh, I don't think I want to take it today. I'll catch it next time, but not today. But this is the thing, man. When we go after the things of God, God makes sure he provides a way of escape. All right? Let me give you all an example. We're talking about this battle. This battle that's going on between the flesh and the spirit. Tomorrow morning, 5 o'clock, that alarm go off. All right? Now that alarm go off. Boop, 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 boop. And you have been committing to spending time in prayer and reading your Bible in the morning. Five o'clock, right? You already said, Lord, I will trust you. I will be there for you. I'm going to serve you with all I got. But that alarm go off at five. Now, you stayed up a little late looking at TikTok. Now, you was on TikTok. And <laughs> don't clap. Don't clap. Just, just keep looking straight. I'm not going to know if that's you. You was on Facebook, and you were looking at this reel. Then you were sending them reels to people at three o'clock in the morning, knowing that you got to get up and spend time with God at five. However... When the alarm goes off, the temptation to hit the snooze button and sleep a little longer is very strong. Now, this is the thing. You have the spirit and the flesh. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. Boom, 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 boom. 
What you going to do? You got a decision to make. Are you going to follow the spirit or are you going to follow the flesh? This is the flesh wanting comfort and convenience while the spirit is urging you to invest in your relationship with God. The battle is real. But the other day, I, I was laying in bed, the alarm went off. I'm like, man, boy, I just prayed before I went to sleep. I really don't need to pray right now. Right? Like, I just, I just really had to pray, like, Lord. I, like, I know you understand this time. Man, I'm, and I look, I got, to, I got in there, and I'm going praying. I just fall in the name. Fall in the name. <laughs> fall the, I don't know. In the name. I, I even never said his name. You're like, what name are you talking about? <laughs> but this is the thing, man. We, that flesh is going to be so strong, but this is the thing. Let's just say, man, you had to get up to go, and somebody said, well, look, man, I got $5,000 for you, man, that income tax check just hit in the bank. And they say, look, man, come get that cash. I bet you wouldn't be no problem. It don't matter. Oh, Lord, let me, go, let me go get what the Lord has for me. You know, we, but for us to spend time in prayer and to read our Bible, which is very important to, to our walk, we up there contemplating, man, what, what should I do? I don't know what I should do. Do you give in to sleep or do you get up and prioritize your time with God? Y'all got a decision to make. So tomorrow, I want everybody to put on the Philly Network if you got up. If you say got up, text, yes, I did. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. All right. Let's keep going. So that's the battle. So the battle is there. The, the spirit is warring against the flesh, the flesh against the spirit, and he's pulling you both ways, and the soul is right in the middle saying, which direction should I go? How do I do what I do? The scripture says in verse 17, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another so that you cannot do the things that you would. All right? As we close it up, to overcome the flesh and do what we need to do, we must walk in the Spirit. Walking by the Spirit means what? It means that we yield our spirit. Remember, the, our spirit connects to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings life to our spirit, and when it is strong, it controls our feelings, our will, and our emotions. All right? Uh, we yield to the Spirit for guidance. We depend on His power and allowing Him to do what? Produce fruit in our lives. You remember as we was producing fruit that either we're going to be ashamed of or we're going to be proud of. The choice is up to you. Is the one who you lend your, your members to is the one that has the kind of fruit that you're going to get. This is not something we can do in our own strength. It requires daily surrenderance and reliance on the Spirit. Let me tell you something, guys. If you're a believer and you really think that you're walking upright and you never pray in a day, you never get in your Bible in the whole day, and not just them scriptures that Brother Ed sent you. I'm talking about... <laughs> well, Brother Ed, be faithful, boy. Sometimes it'd be 11 o'clock. Oh, I forgot to send this. Let me send this. But this is the thing, not just that. If you really think that you're a believer and you, you think that you're really trusting in God and you go two, three, four, five, six days without reading your Bible and praying, man, you're fooling yourself, man. Amen. We have to make sure that we prioritize, prioritize the things of God. Stop allowing everything else to take priority in our lives. We struggle so much every single day in all kind of aspects. Why? Because we don't place the priority on the things that's important. God says, man, seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. You're wondering why you can't get that raise at work? Because you're not seeking God. You're wondering why your children are wilding out? Because you're not seeking God. You're wondering why your relationship with your husband and your spouse is not? Because you're not seeking God. You're seeking everything else. You take every little, uh, you, you're always looking for what's redeemable. Right, we go on Facebook and we find these little cliche quotes and we think that's scripture. And we try to live like that. And we wonder why everything around us is falling apart. Believers, brothers and sisters, listen. Get into your word. Prioritize the things of God. Pray. And I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. Amen. Right? Oh, uh, let's see something here. Practical ways to walk in the spirit, including prayer and dependence upon God. Acknowledging your need for the Holy Spirit to help you each day. Ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit and empower you to live according to his will. Romans 12, 2, he says this here. And be not conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you don't get in his word and study it, you will never know what the perfect will of God is. Amen. As you meditate on scripture, the spirit will use it to transform the way you think and, you align, and it align your desires with God. Obedience and faith. Trust God. Step out on obedience. Put him first. I say, God, look, I'm just going, I, I, I've lived for the world. I've done all this other stuff. It didn't work. Go and go wholeheartedly after the things of God. Amen? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you right now. God, and I give you glory, Father, for just speaking to us for the last hour, God. Just showing us, Father, that, that we're in a battle, but Lord God, the, the victory is truly ours through you. Father, I pray now, Lord God, for all of my brothers and sisters, Lord God, that as we have heard your voice, Lord God, that we would truly prioritize you. We would put you first, God, and not just in word, but also in deed, God. Father God, that we would not neglect spending time in your presence, Lord God, every single day, Father. That we would not, Lord God, uh, put off, Lord God, telling someone about you. Father, I pray now, Lord God, for every believer, Lord God, that's in this room, and I ask, Lord God, that you would truly, Lord God, use us to bring your glory, Father. And to my brothers and sisters that's in here tonight that's, that don't know you, God. Father, they have heard your word, and maybe they have been yielding and, and going after their flesh. And I pray tonight, Lord God, that they would make a conscious decision to, to follow you. Father, I pray, Lord God, that something would burn in within them, Lord God, and they would begin to repent and see themselves as, as sinners, God. And Father, we know, Lord God, that your word is true, that when we ask for forgiveness, you are so faithful to forgive us. So, Father, I pray now, Lord God, you would elevate the rest of our week. And Father, I pray, Lord God, that we would, when we leave this place, Lord God, that you would constantly be on the forefront of our minds. We thank you for your word, and we thank you for your spirit, Lord God, that you have sent to be our helper. Lead and guide us this week, Father. And we thank you now, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you all so much, brothers and sisters, for... Uh, coming out tonight, man, y'all have a blessed rest of the evening, and we'll see y'all in the next go-round. Amen?